once the zipper's in, I'll pull closed and double check. And I'm not pleased with how close I am to the teeth, so I'm gonna make one more pass. With velvet, I don't like to use an invisible zipper foot because sometimes I get too close to the teeth. So I usually just run two passes. First one to make sure it doesn't pucker, and the second one to get a little bit closer to the teeth. With velvet, you can run the risk of stitching too close to the teeth and making it very difficult to open and close. I think I got the right closeness now. Now oh, that looks great. Okay, I'm gonna open the zipper back up a little bit and then stitch in from there to there on the sides. I'll need to switch the zipper foot. And with my half inch seam allowance, I'll stitch just about a quarter inch beyond the stitch that was used to secure the zipper. Okay, pleased with that. And on this side, lining up the zipper end. quarter inch beyond. Okay, while it's in this position, I can make my markings. Now on the, on the um, bolster ends, I had um, four markings, top, bottom, left, right. And so I'll make a little snip to represent the top. Bottom already has a seam, so I won't need to mark that. And now I need to mark the halfway point. Let's do it this way. If I open up and align my snip to the bottom, to that bottom seam, now I can snip. Now these are just quarter inch snips, just enough so I can see them, but not a, I, these are not relief cuts. Mark that align the top snip to the zipper seam and I can make my quarter markings right top and bottom. Okay, now to insert the end caps. I wanna make sure that I've got the grain aligned. So I'm gonna make a little marking at the bottom so that the bottom matches up to the seam. Okay, so this one, the the velvet, the brush is nice and smooth going down. It's rough when I go up. So this must be the top and this must be the bottom. So I'm gonna just put a little dot there to make sure I know it connects with the bottom here. And on this piece, would have been easier if I marked this at the cut, but I didn't, so okay. This is top, this is bottom a little dot there to recognize the bottom. And it's rough both ways, left to right, so yeah, that feels good. I'm gonna put four markings. There's my dot, that's gonna connect here. I'm gonna pin from the inside, just at those four markings. That's the bottom. There's the top. And the quarter left. And quarter right. And on the other side, let me seal off the zipper. Let's do a, a 
little back tack and a snip. Try and make sure I keep it just inside the seam allowance for my end caps. And the bottom marked with the dot. And the top. Now to stitch around the bolster ends, I like to switch the foot out again, put it back to the left zipper foot where the needle's on the left side of the foot. And I also like to sew from the um, inside of the circle rather than the outside, and I'll show you why. So if I'm stitching on the inside of the circle with the needle to the left of the foot, then my stitch is the closest thing to the inside of the circle, and my foot doesn't interfere by trying to flatten out the circle and crunch the underside of the fabric. So I'll start here at the bottom. Remember we have a half inch seam allowance, and I can guide that using the half inch marking on the throat plate. And I'm trying to ease the circle in to get to the pinpoint. And I can do this by holding the circle upright. So much easier if you're not trying to flatten things out. But let the, let the stitch run straight and hold this upright. Okay, so ease. Ease the little curve of the circle in. And I'm heading right to the pin with no puckers. And I can just leave that pin in and run right over it. Yes. And, and working my way around all the time, trying to go for a straight stitch by manipulating the circle or the tube that we're creating by the bolster end. And I'm heading to the next pin and it's all working out, especially if I hold it upright like that. But I'm headed to that pin, I'm gonna hop right over it, maintaining the half inch seam allowance. There's not a lot of easing you need to do if you keep holding your circle upright like this. And keep in mind that you're, you're sewing a straight line on this strip. And if you try and just keep manipulating the fabric to allow you to sew that straight line, things will tend to move much more smoothly. Whatever you do, don't move your pins. That won't help. If you approach a pin and it's really not lining up, then stop, rip out, and fix it. But the pins are at the exact quarter markings, and so moving the pin is, is just going to make it go all wonky. Okay, so I've got that complete circle. Now I can remove pins. And if I've done things correctly, this line should be relatively straight. This is a little wonky right here. If I do anything, I might rip that part out, just that portion, and go back and straighten that stitch up. I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. There we go. But again, from the underside, was 
and I can just maintain my straight half inch seam allowance. Much better. And I can see on this side, that's straightened out. Resist the urge to go back in and, and check it from the other side. If, if it's looking good from this side, and you've got a relatively straight line on the half inch seam allowance here, it will be good. Trust that it will be good when you flip it around. We'll start at the bottom where the zipper seam is and circle upright and focusing on a straight line around the curve. <laughs> I could have I kept that pin there. I should have kept that pin there actually. It would have been um, smarter to keep that pin there so there was no chance of shifting as I used that corner. Approaching this next pin. Straight line. And you see how I'm, I'm approaching this next pin and I, it looks like I'm getting a, gonna get a pucker. Um, I, I, it's not gonna get better as I get closer, so I should stop now and rip back. And I can see, I probably didn't ease enough of the circle in just a few inches back. So I'm going to slide back. I'm going to put that pin back in. All right, here we go. Back tack. Half inch seam allowance. This is working out much better now. See, I'm pulling that circle in so that the cut edges align with each other. And then I can press that down. My stitch is a half inch in. Pull my circle upright ease that in. I'm not easing it in so that there's a pucker, but I'm making sure these edges align so that my stitch hits at exactly that half inch mark around the circle. And again, I'm, I'm sewing straight and manipulating the circle to follow that straight line of the tube. I just had my little mess to clean up where I had ripped out. Okay, I'm pleased with that circle. And if I look on the outside, am I pleased with this being a straight line? Yes, I am. Okay, I'm just gonna run this through the serger and we'll see what it checks out. On the serger, I wanna go from the inside of the circle as well. That way I can in the same fashion, keep sewing in a straight line. And I'm just skimming, not, not really trying to shave off any, just skimming so that we get a nice finished edge on the inside of the bolster. It's 
instead of holding it like that, I'll hold it upright. beautiful finish. Let's see what it looks like stuffed. When I stuff bolsters, I like to make sure that the seam allowance is not pushing into the circle like that. Not like that, but rather pulled so it lays flat on the outside of the circle. So I go in there and open that up and then, then the form will tend to fill out a little more evenly.